Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. In this presentation, I'm gonna be talking about how to use a plasma cutter. Now, I'm gonna be showing you a little bit of the different components of the torch, but I'm not gonna to get too far into the theory of plasma cutting. I'm just gonna show you how to use one uh, if it's already been put together, it's already plugged in, ready to go. I will talk more about the theory in another video. I just want to be able to put something out there to where if you have a plasma cutter that's already set up, ready to go, uh, this video is going to allow you um, to gain some information, some knowledge uh, to, to be able to use one, especially in our shop. So let's get to it. The plasma cutter that I'm going to be using in this video is the Hypertherm PowerMax 900. Hypertherm is one of those companies that produces various models of plasma cutters. This just happens to be one of their more powerful uh, products, so it's a little bit more capable as far as um, how high it can go in amperage. Uh, and so the higher the amperage that you can set on your plasma cutter, that's going to translate into being able to cut thicker metal. So this is uh, a little bit more on the beefy scale so I can cut through some pretty thick stuff with it but for the purposes of this video I'm just going to stick with some thinner material uh, just to get the basics down and here is our plasma cutting torch and so what I've done with the cutting torch here is I, or sorry plasma torch what I've done with the plasma torch is I've taken it apart and I'm going to identify the different parts as I put them back on the torch. So the first part that I'm going to put on is the swirl ring. And it only goes on one way. So you'll see here I'm trying to put it on incorrectly. And you'll see that it's not seating properly. So I have to flip it around. And then that uh, that's going to allow me to insert it into the torch. And then the next part is going to be the electrode. With this particular plasma torch the swirl ring goes on first then the electrode the next part that goes on is the tip some people call this the contact tip some people call this the cutting tip in general this is just called the tip so once you've got all of that on there make sure to hold it in place so that way your pieces don't uh, you know start coming apart and then you're going to slip the retaining cup over that and the retaining cup is going to screw into the torch and so this is basically what holds mostly everything together. And there's one last part. So the last part to go on this particular torch is the drag shield. So while technically speaking, the drag shield is optional, you would just, you know, wear down your, your tip a lot faster without it. So use the drag shield. This is going to allow you to uh, extend the life of your consumable parts. All right, then you want to just make sure to tighten it down, just finger tight. And once you've got everything on there, you don't hear anything jiggling, you don't feel like anything's loose, you're ready to get to cutting. Also, this particular plasma cutter, uh, it's on switches in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that on. You'll see some green lights uh, pop up. So let's get a close up real fast. So the first light is obviously your power light. So if you have power, this first line is going to turn on. The second one is line voltage. So you know if that comes on, also good. The third one is your temp light. So if you happen to get close to the duty cycle or you end up going past your machine's duty cycle, this light will turn on, which pretty much means uh, you have to let the machine cool off. It's not going to give you a cutting arc if you were to try to um, activate it while this light is on. So wait for the machine to cool off. When it's cooled back down, this light's going to turn off and you can go ahead and resume uh, cutting operations. And then you have your pressure light, which uh, this machine is hooked into a air compressor, so we don't have any like compressed uh, oxygen or nitrogen or anything like that, okay? So this is just regular compressed air. And so when you see this light turn on, that means that you do have pressure, so you are going to have gas that uh, comes into the torch uh, if you were to push the button, pull the trigger, and then activate the cutting arc. And then if you wanted to test that pressure, the button next to it allows you to test it. So I'm going to give that a push here soon. 
And then another thing, um, the dial right next to all these lights is your amperage setting. So depending on how thick a material you're cutting, you can go ahead and vary your amperage. However, one thing I like to do in the shop is I just leave it maxed out. This way I know that anything that I'm gonna be cutting with it, I'll be able to cut. Then the only thing I really need to vary is my travel speed. And then the gauge below that is your air pressure. And then the dial to the right of that is the dial or the adjustment knob that allows you to adjust your PSI. So the pressure of the compressed gas. So depending on what you're doing, you know, you can adjust your amperage, adjust your air pressure, and you know, once all that is dialed in, you're ready to cut. One thing I'm going to demonstrate here is that as soon as you pull the trigger on the plasma torch, you're going to activate that cutting gas. However, unless you hold it down with this particular model, you're not actually going to establish the cutting arc. You have to hold the trigger down and then wait maybe like a second or two and then you'll see the arc. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this next. And after you're done cutting, there there is also a bit of a post flow. So the post flow, you can think of it as it helps to cool down the internal parts of the torch. So again, it's uh, minimizing wear and tear. Uh, so don't worry about your post flow too much. If it's there, it's there. All right, and one last step we need to make sure is done before we're actually ready to cut. We need to make sure that the ground clamp is hooked on to any piece that we're attempting to cut, or we need to make sure that the ground clamp is attached to the table that our part is sitting on. So think back to all of our other arc welding processes. They all require a closed circuit. And so having this ground clamp is going to allow us to actually close the circuit so that way we can uh, cut successfully. All right, and let's take a look at some of the things we're gonna need. So first things first, gloves. So you wanna protect your hands. We're gonna be dealing with hot metal still. You can use either regular work gloves or thick welding gloves, and you're going to need a hammer just in case your pieces stick together. Uh, you also need a chipping hammer to chip off the dross that forms on the end of the side of the cut. And you'll need some pliers or vice grips in order to handle the material when you're done. Now, as far as eye protection goes, you can use the same uh, shade lens that we use for oxyfuel welding. Some people prefer to go a little bit higher and actually use their welding helmet because the arc that's produced is more or less the same that we use during welding. We'll need the metal, of course, the metal that we're gonna be cutting, and some soapstone. So depending on the shape or contour of your cut, if you want to, you can go ahead and outline your cut with some soapstone, that way you can see it as you're cutting. And then maybe another piece of metal, say like a piece of angle iron or this big uh, block of steel to to guide your cuts, make sure that your cuts are straight, but you don't need to use that. If you want to do everything freehand, you're free to do so as well. It just depends on what your skill level is. And here I'm just getting prepared for my first cut, but before I do so, I want to let you know that when you're cutting with plasma, you want to make sure that your torch is over the edge of the plate that you're going to be cutting. So very similar to oxyfuel cutting, we want to have the torch just over the edge so that way when the arc is established, it doesn't just gouge into the surface of the material uh, anywhere outside of the path that we're actually going to be cutting. We want to start the cut on the edge and then bring that cut in into the plate and then along the path that we want to cut. So I'm going to start on the edge, pull the trigger, that arc is going to start, and then I'm going to work my way into the plate as I cut it. As I'm cutting using the plasma cutter, all I'm doing is holding the torch straight up and down, and I'm just dragging it across the surface of the plate nice and slow, consistent speed, trying to keep my hand as stable as possible, because trust me, if there's any wiggle to your cut, you're going to be able to see it. So nice and slow, I'm just dragging it across. And as long as you're making uh, some good quality cuts, the pieces that you're cutting through should just fall off the edge when your cut is complete. If they end up sticking, 
then that probably means that something was wrong with your amperage. Maybe it was too low or your travel speed was much too slow and there was some fusion going on uh, at the underside of the cut and you just need to go in with maybe a hammer, a chipping hammer, break that stuff apart uh, and then clean it up to see what was going on. Now all I'm doing here is I'm giving you a side view a little bit closer up of some more cuts and then I'm also going to include another view uh, on the second part of the screen. This is through my second camera which allows me to kind of cut out some of that bright light and give you the opportunity to focus on the cut itself. Uh, look at how far away the torch is from the surface. Look at the motion of the torch and then also be able to see all the sparks that are shooting out through the underside of that plate as I cut it. On that second cut though, I made sure to have an intentional wiggle to kind of simulate an unsteady hand. So with plasma cutting, it gives you very precise cuts. And so any movement that's out of the ordinary, it'll definitely pop up and you'll definitely be able to see it. And we're just going to continue with a few more cuts, but from a different point of view, just to give you an overall idea of what the motion is going to look like for your cuts from start to finish. Look at my travel speed, look at the distance between the tip of the torch and the metal itself, um, look at the sparks that are coming out through the backside, watch the metal as it falls off when I finish my cut, if you can look at the details i know that the camera is a little far away it's not zoomed in but try to look at the profile of the cut face when i'm done with these cuts so there's a lot that goes into plasma cutting uh, i understand that we're just getting started you're just learning so it's okay make the mistakes now so that way later on you'll be a pro at, at your craft And here I'm going to give you a couple of close-up shots at a couple of those cuts that I had just made now. However, they are from the secondary camera, so it's, again, it's going to cut out a lot of that bright light and it's going to allow you to focus more on the cut itself. And last, what I have for you now is, again, a series of some cuts, but I'm going to have some side-by-side -side angles. The one on the left is going to be just from the naked eye, and then the part of the screen on the right is going to be from the secondary camera. These are the same cuts, just one is going to have a shaded view at the cut. And this is all just to give you the best views possible and the most amount of information that I can simply by demonstrating.
And that concludes this plasma cutting demonstration. Thank you for joining in, and I'll see you next time.